David, do cigars go bad? Yes, they do. And I know that sounds contrary to what most people probably are being taught or educated, but if you leave a cigar outside of humidification long term, the cigar does go bad. Now, when we talk a little later, because I have a funny feeling you're going to ask about humidors since we have humidors in front of us, we'll discuss the exception to what I just said if you live in the right climate, which most of us don't. So, and so what's the shelf life, depending on climate and all of these other factors? Well, so that's interesting. A lot of people ask, what's the shelf life of a cigar? How long does a cigar last? And, and like you asked to start with, does a cigar go bad, which we laughed about a little bit. Um, the reality is, properly humidified, a cigar can keep for as long as that cigar was designed to keep. Now, everybody asks, well, what does that mean? You know, when you say the cigar was designed to keep for how long, it depends on the tobacco and it depends on the maker and it depends on the proper humidification. But generally speaking, cigars that would have a Connecticut, for example, and they're lighter and milder will probably not last quite as long as something that is maybe 100% broadleaf and Nicaraguan fillers with a you know Maduro style binder. Those have more oils in them, so they would have a tendency to last a lot longer. But at some point, cigars will all become mild. Will they ever not smoke? As long as you keep it humidified, a thousand years from now, that cigar will smoke. It just may not have any taste to it. Okay. All right. I didn't know that, actually. Yeah. I didn't know that. So how about, uh, before we get into the humidor component, what about if they're dry and cracked? Is there a way to save them? In all honesty, yes, the trash can. <clears throat> That's how you save those cigars. But what about if they're just mildly, mildly dry, a little cracked? I've seen even my dad smoke cigars like that, and they seemed okay. Well, I will say this. Um, I've been smoking for over 30 years, and have I done what your dad has done? Mm -hmm, I have. Would I recommend it for a novice smoker? No. Um, can you rehumidify a cigar? Yes, you could do it slowly. Crack cigars, you really have to know how to, depends on the crack. If it's a little bit at the foot, for example, of the cigar, yeah, you can light that cigar and smoke it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't bother me. But however, if the crack is in the middle or there's a large crack in the middle, if you don't know how to repair it properly, it's not going to smoke right. So usually those, I tell people, don't bother. And if it's been dried for too long, in other words, I'm guilty of the fact that I forgot to humidify some cigars in a bag and I put them into my you know, humidor at home and uh, they, the bag was sealed tight and mm -hmm. they dried out in the bag and they were hard as a rock and they were useless, mm -hmm. you know, so it just depends. It's kind of, you have to know over the, the time period of smoking cigars and knowing what you're doing when you smoke cigars. But for most, I recommend if it's cracked anywhere other than the foot or where you're going to cut it at the head, or if it's too dry, throw the cigar away. You're going to be disappointed. And how about if it's over humidified? <clears throat> so over humidification is easily fixed by just really taking the cigar out and putting it in the outdoor climate away from you, your humidifier, your humidor or something like that. Um, depending where you live, if you live, for example, it's January and you're in Boston, it should take you about a day. If it's July and we're in Miami, it should take you about a week. Mm -hmm. You know, because the climate around you, and this is what I started talking about before, the climate around you affects the cigar. So the humidity in the air, the temperature and all that is how it becomes wetter or drier. Okay. A cigar should feel when you grab it, properly humidified cigar, it should, if you give it a little bit of a pinch, it should feel firm, but with give. That's the only way I can really describe it. You shouldn't be able to grab it and it feels like a wet sponge. That's way over humidified. Mm -hmm. Or if you pinch it and it feels like a hard rock, mm -hmm. that's way under humidified. It should have a little bit of a give. Now, one thing that's very interesting, you mentioned your dad, like me, we keep certain cigars at certain humidity levels. So Maduro's and darker cigars, we tend to keep at a drier humidity rate, while Connecticut's and lighter cigars, we tend to keep at a wetter humidity rate. So we range anywhere from, you know, your dad and I have discussed this, from 66% relative humidity all the way up to 70 or 72, depending on the cigar and what it does. 
The other thing is if you're going to age cigars, you should age cigars at a lower humidity rate because it causes the oils to stay longer. So, yeah, there's a lot of interest, you know, interesting points to, mm-hmm. to how to keep the cigar. And I know some people uh, might have questions about travel humidors or packs, and we're going to cover that on, in another video. Uh, here we're going to focus more on, you know, how do these <clears throat> bigger type humidors work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, if you have any specific questions, you can ask um, in the comments below, and we will address all of them. So, David, tell us a little bit about these humidors. Well, I picked here two classic kind of size humidors. One is a desktop, which is this smaller one. One is a standard humidor, which holds more cigars. And obviously, humidors come in all shapes, all sizes. Mm-hmm. They come in all sorts of different materials, and they come in every price point under the sun. So, there's a few things that I always look at when I'm buying a humidor. The first thing I look at is I want to make sure that the inside of the humidor is lined in cedar. The purpose of the cedar, and I want to make something very clear, white Spanish cedar, is because the cedar is what imparts some of the flavors onto the cigar and helps the cigar age. You don't want to have a humidor that is lined in American red cedar. That'll make your cigars taste awful. So if it is cedar lined, it has to be white Spanish cedar. That is the number one choice, there are other white cedars in the world, so you can have those also, but red cedars are no-no. Now, there are humidors that don't use cedar on the inside, and that's okay, as long as it's a wood inside for the wood ones. The second thing I look for is how the humidor in the lid seals. And if you look at this one, there's usually a rabbit that goes around, and as it closes down, it should feel tight. When you open it and close it, you should feel a little bit of tightness or a little bit of, for closing and a little bit of suction when you open it. The purpose of that is you don't want the humidity inside to escape. And then the last thing really boils down to how you humidify a humidor and how you set it up. So in years of experience, I have really one favorite way to do it. And I'm going to tell you the favorite way and tell you the things I don't like about the other ways. My favorite way is finding a two-way system. A two-way system either comes in what you see as packs, and we mentioned that earlier, Mm -hmm. but we'll discuss it later, or it comes in what is known as gel beads, that you use polypropylene glycol to fill. A lot of people say in the gel, well, can I use distilled water? You can, as long as you know it's truly distilled. However, don't use anything other than PG or distilled water. A lot of people use tap water. And as we all know, most of our tap water is not filtered. It has chlorine in it, it has other parts in it. And eventually over time, that will get onto your cigars because as it releases the humidity, those particles go with it. I'm not a fan of sponges. I'm not a fan of some of the, I've seen, you know, an older humidor's clay. I'm not a fan of those because they're really one-way systems. They don't work as well. And if you're not paying attention, they don't keep the relative humidity at at an even level. So that's why I like the two-way system. One thing you have to do with a new humidor is you have to make it, um, you have to uh, set it up. Mm -hmm. I'm blanking on the word right now. I apologize. But the whole, you have to acclimate the humidor. There's Mm -hmm, what I was looking mm -hmm. for. The best way to do that, honestly, is there is a company out there, and we can talk about it further in the next video about the packs and the different humidification systems, but there's a company out there that sells a pack that will acclimate your humidor. Um, I would use those before anything else. Do not, do not, do not, and I say this very, very much, wipe your humidor down with water. If someone tells you that, they're asking you to break your humidor. Do not soak your humidor. Do not do anything. Use a two-way system to acclimate your humidor. That's very important. The interesting thing is you need to acclimate the larger ones much more so than the smaller ones. The smaller ones basically in a second they're acclimated because it's less space. The cavity in this is much smaller than this one. So that's pretty much my take on humidors. Okay. Is there anything else that you think people might want to know about keeping cigars or humidors? So one of the questions I get asked a lot is do I keep my cigars in the cellophane or do I take them out? That's right. And Very good question. That's personal preference. But it really depends on whether you want to age the cigar. So what I'll tell you is this. For the newer smoker, if you want to try and age a cigar, my question to, or my response to you is go to your tobacconist that you like, ask them if they feel that cigar will age. Because every cigar is different. But the tobacconist, especially if he has years of experience running the store, will be able to tell you that because he'll know. If not, do some research online. Other people talk about aging cigars all the time. So you can look online and find out if that specific cigar ages well and what it does and how long. Very similar to how you would look at wine. 
where you would look at, you know, other libations that people tend to mm -hmm. age and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. do things with. Um, whether it's in cello or not depends on whether you want to age it or not. So if it's out of the cello, it's going to age because the aging process allows the same tobacco and the cedar to all interact together. One of the things, though, however, you need to remember is if you've got two cigars of one kind out of the cello next to two cigars of another kind out of the cello next to two cigars of a third kind out of the cello, and they're all next to each other, it will go across. They don't just stay cigar by cigar. The tobacco, even though it's dried, is still a living, breathing, organic product. Mm -hmm. So it will interchange the oils back and forth between all the cigars. So the cigar that's number one will eventually have its oil sitting in the cigar that's number six, you know, if they're all touching. So one of the reasons why a lot of um, humidors come with these little dividers is for that purpose, to divide cigars so that their same kind sits with same kind and you separate the other ones. One of the ways you can do this is you can create um, your own dividers by finding some wood boxes from a manufacturer and just breaking the interior part, part up. Another way you can do it is you can buy extra dividers online or a lot of Cigar manufacturers today put a very thin sheet of cedar in the top of the box. You can take that and break it up into a few pieces to divide up your cigars if you want. Mm -hmm. So that's a way to do that. If you choose to keep them in cello, there is no interaction between the cigars. But then again, they probably don't age quite as quickly. And some people choose to do that. I have them both ways. I have them in cello. I have them out of cello. And I, you know, smoke them when I think it's time to smoke them. <laughs> All right, everyone. See you soon. Thank, Thank you, you, David. Thank you, guys.